In 1987, Square was a struggling developer about to go out of business, and in a bid to save their future, they released one last video game, aptly titled Final Fantasy. But that's not why they called it that. They originally wanted to call it Fighting Fantasy, but that name was taken. So they went with the next best F word they could think of. No, not that F word. Anyway, this game was eventually released into America in 1990. I've talked before about how I've had a long sentimental history with the Final Fantasy franchise. With it reaching its 30 year anniversary, it's been long overdue since I looked back upon it. The original Final Fantasy game is how I got started, and I love it. But I've never given it the proper critical eye. Until now. One of my favorite things about the original game is how your party is whatever you want it to be. It gives you six classes to choose from for four party members. This alone gives a lot of replayability as you can try different party makeups and challenge yourself. Just don't do four white mages. That'll never work. For this playthrough, I'm going with my favorite build. Fighter, Thief, White Mage, and Black Mage. And what better way to go on a journey to save the world than alongside my friends? Unfortunately, the names max out at four letters, so join our Warriors of Light, Peeb, Jerd, Ian, and Joof. The game begins with the party right outside the Kingdom of Corneria, or Cornelia in the more modern translations. You start off with nothing, and a paltry 400 gold to purchase weapons, armor, and a couple of spells. The story is that a disgraced knight of Corneria, Garland, kidnapped Princess Sarah and took her north to the Temple of Fiends. The four warriors, each carrying a darkened orb, or crystal, set out to rescue her. It's a simple premise. Save the princess. Basic, but it gets you going into the game right away. After getting the entire party equipped and realizing how dirty my face is, I feel personally attacked. It's out to the wilderness for, what else? Random battles. It may not seem like it, but this screen alone was revolutionary when this game came out. The enemy party is clear, and more importantly, you can see your own party to the side. See, before Final Fantasy, the few NES RPGs that came out before this were in first person view, with little to no animation, with static battle screens and text playing out what happens in battles. Suddenly, there's this new hotness that's like, whoa, did you see that? He swung his sword. Holy crap! That was fire! These few simple graphics made the battle so much more alive than anything we had seen before. Seeing the power of your spells helps you feel it, and when you feel it, battles become more engaging. And every time you deal damage, you see them get covered in a fart cloud, I guess. Battles are completely turn-based. Each round, you choose an action for each one of your party members, and then see them play out in a random order, affected by their agility stat. To be efficient, you need to pick your targets carefully, because in this game, if a monster is killed and another party member was targeting them, that attack hits nothing and is ineffective. One of the most common criticisms I hear of this battle system is the ineffective attacks. It annoys players and feel like they wasted attacks and time. And, well, they did. Think of it this way. Another problem most people have with RPGs is when a random battle starts and all you have to do is rapidly press the A button to fight and move on as quickly as possible. But with this system, you can't. And it works great. These ineffective attacks keep you engaged in every battle. To move on quickly, you need to plan out your turns and use your teams as efficiently as possible, rather than just mashing A to physically attack everything. As you get a feel for your party and their strengths, and the overall toughness of the enemies you fight, you become aware of the best strategies and act accordingly. For example, I know that in this group of imps, Peeb can easily take one down on his own. Jurd has an okay chance of killing one, as does Ian. Joof doesn't stab for much and will definitely not kill one by himself unless he casts a spell, but he can back up Jurd or Ian to help guarantee slaying that enemy, minimizing the damage we'll take in return. That in mind, I execute and can see it play out. This is the thought process you'll go through for every single battle. You stay in there, thinking out attacks that minimize damage or don't waste spells, and execute your plans. This does make battles feel like they take longer, but to me, having to think this way for every fight to maximize efficiency is awesome, and I would gladly trade off exercising my brain each fight 
for the convenience of rapidly pressing A. The actual combat itself is simplistic. Everything is in text boxes at the bottom, showing the attacker, the target, and the results. Uh, not exactly the most thrilling, no. It makes battles feel slow paced. I'm pretty old school though, so to me when I see this, I imagine it's like the game is a dungeon master telling me the results. Like it's saying to me, Jerd attacks the wolf. 22 damage. It even has a slight delay on some results, giving itself its own sense of dramatic pause. Peeb attacks the mad pony. 36 damage. Terminated. The brief pause between attacks also gives each action a sense of impact, like it gives it a moment for everything to sink in. Your brain gets a small moment to process what just happened. Newer RPGs move so fast that your choices are almost reactionary instead of planned out, thought through, or strategic. But here, you see what went down and you can think out your options. I'm not saying this battle system is better than others. But it does have its own merits that worked fantastic for the time, and personally, I think still holds up, especially for people who are more accustomed to older RPGs. If you find this combat to be too slow or too boring, honestly, you're not wrong. But I hope you understand why this was so good and why I still love it. Speaking of love, the level ups in this game are so good. Maybe it's just a personal preference, but when I level up in an RPG, I want to know exactly what improves, and Final Fantasy provides that. This is a rarity for RPGs, since most try to save time by not giving you that information. But this is what makes leveling up so fun, is seeing what improves, especially since this game has a little bit of a randomness factor. So it's really exciting when Joof gets a large hit point boost since I'm so used to him getting jack squat- OH MY GOD JOOF JUST BREAK 200 ALREADY! After leveling up a little bit, we went to the Temple of Fiends and faced Garland, who is as threatening as a Nintendo game can let him be. I, Garland, shall knock you all down! Defeating him returns Princess Sarah back to the king, who orders a bridge to be built, letting you cross the continent into a more expansive world. This also triggers one of the most iconic things in the history of Final Fantasy. This little scene is wonderful for two reasons. One, it sets up that your journey has just begun. You saved the princess, but could barely go anywhere. Now, the world opens up to you and the true test has begun. Two, this is the first instance of what is commonly known as the theme of Final Fantasy. This song would be used in every main series Final Fantasy game from here on out. Except for two. And ten. And thirteen, so not all of them. Alright, never mind. Every battle also starts with what I consider a very iconic bass line. This is used for numerous battle songs and a lot of Final Fantasy games. I love this! Every time I hear this, I'm filled with nostalgia of the series' roots and excitement to see how far it's come with whatever current game I'm playing. And few things are as iconic or triumphant as that victory theme. Seriously, people who have never even played a Final Fantasy game will hum this jingle to themselves after succeeding at something. And one more iconic song, the prelude, is played right as you start up. Speaking of franchise staples, how about the Black Mage? Of all the character designs that started here, this one has endured the most. Airships started in this game, as did the general sci-fi elements of the series, as even this game has robots and ancient civilizations that is somehow more advanced than modern day. It also has the main characters going around to restore four crystals, each one representing one of the elements. Gee, an epic RPG in which you collect four treasures of the elements, and I don't know how to make this running gag work here? The general story is pretty loose as you travel the land and help towns with local problems, each one pertaining to one of the four crystals, or orbs as they're called in this game, which is actually a pretty good plot structure as you're solving several smaller arcs that all feed into a much larger story. Pretty impressive for an NES game. Final Fantasy also has several great moments of breaking linearity. 
As soon as you cross the bridge, you can freely explore the world available to you without any fears. Then, after helping the dwarves blow up in the canal, the entire ocean is open to you with several towns to go to. You can also skip the volcano and go straight to the ice cave, which goes to the airship, which opens up the rest of the game, and then you can do all kinds of things out of order. There's even a completely optional side quest involving Bahamut. If you complete his trial in the Castle of Ordeals and deliver him the rat tail from there, he awards you with a class change, powering up your entire party. Peeb the fighter becomes a knight, allowing him to cast low-level white magic. Jurd the thief becomes a ninja, giving him more access to weapon proficiencies in being able to cast black magic. Ian and Joof become white and black mages, allowing their full potential and being able to cast the most powerful spells in the game. I also really like this moment because it shows that your party has gone on such a journey that they just didn't gain levels. They matured. They look older, more experienced, wiser. You feel their increase in power, either from casting higher level spells or suddenly dealing more hits with every attack. This, in addition to the level up stating precisely what increases each time, makes growth of your party in this game feel so rewarding. It's exciting every time, rather than just something that you have to do to progress. With all this constant praise and love for Final Fantasy, you're probably wondering, does it even do anything wrong? Well, half the game doesn't work. Good God, there are so many bugs and glitches in this game, it's not even funny. Like half the spells don't work. Temper and Saber are supposed to increase your attack power. They don't work. There's a lock spell which is supposed to make it easier to hit your enemies, but instead does the exact opposite and makes them get way more evasion. Remember how I said it's awesome when the game tells you when stat increases happen? Well, intelligence doesn't work, so your spells don't improve at all. The luck stat is used for running away, and it doesn't work properly either. It's more about what position you are in the party rather than the luck, making the one defining trait of the thief absolutely worthless. You can also find rare equipment like the flame sword to deal more damage against undead and ice monsters, the wear sword to deal more damage against wear enemies, the dragon sword for dragons, coral sword, sun sword, giant sword, and more! None of them work! They're all just regular swords. Sometimes the bugs work in your favor, as is the famous Peninsula of Power. This small area lets you fight enemies that were intended for way later in the game, and a well-placed Fire 2 Blast can skyrocket your party and experience points and gold pieces. Which is needed sometimes, since this game has a few moments of sudden difficulty spikes. Aside from the single room Temple of Fiends, the first true dungeon you go into is the Marsh Cave. And if you're not prepared, this place will kick your ass. Everything deals a lot of damage. Some enemies resist attacks, and a whole mess of them will poison you. The volcano drains your hit points with every step. There's also the ice cave, which you need to do to get the airship, and this place is filled with dudes that instantly kill you with a single touch. Or, how about making your way through the second to last dungeon, and right before the fight with the fourth elemental fiend, the super rare monster Warmech shows up and wrecks your entire party and you gotta do the whole dungeon again! Anyway... After defeating all four fiends and each elemental orb is restored, you see all their energies from the four corners of the world lead to a center point of the map, and that point is the Temple of Fiends, back where it all began. Returning there and using the light orbs to remove the dark orb there reveals a teleporter, which transports the entire party 2,000 years into the past. There, you battle the four fiends once more and face the final villain of it all, Garland. Remember him? Seriously though, do you? It turns out the person who released the fiends 2,000 years ago, plunging the world into darkness, was Garland, who was sent into the past by the fiends themselves, creating a time loop. Garland then becomes the ultimate evil chaos. Thankfully, our stalwart heroes, Peep, Jerd, Ian, and Joof, defeat him and save the land, sending them back to the present with everyone having no knowledge of their feats. This also means the prophecy of the four light warriors saving the world was self-fulfilling and became true because you already did it in the past, and it turns out Final Fantasy games have always had a history of having overly convoluted plots. By the way, if you were wondering where all the top-notch graphics were in this game, it's right here in the end credits. Look at that. That's a good looking the end. This was awesome! I thoroughly enjoyed playing this again. 
I still have just as much fun and excitement playing this now as I did almost 30 years ago. It's easy to see why this game was so successful in Japan and in America. In fact, Final Fantasy 1 is still worth playing today. But not this version. Final Fantasy 1 was ported numerous times, first to the Wonderswan, which was brought to the PlayStation 1 under Final Fantasy Origins, and then updated again for the Game Boy Advance as Dawn of Souls, and one more update onto the PSP. Honestly, any one of these versions is better than the original. Things are rebalanced, bugs are fixed, new things are added, any one of these are fine. I think the PS1 version offers the closest recreation to the original game with reasonable modern conveniences, while the PSP version has updates that makes it play much differently, but also has the most content and easily looks the best. I can easily recommend playing Final Fantasy 1 again, at least any of the ports that I mentioned. If you're truly old school or have patience, then the NES original is still excellent. That's why my final rating for this game is a black mage out of 10. It's simple, but everything about this game has endured to this day, much like the iconic black mage itself. The RPG gameplay is as old school as it gets, and it's one of the best examples of that. The class creation, impactful character growth, and strategic battles keep you engaged throughout your entire playthrough, since the basic story won't do it for you. It's difficult to fully recommend the original version unless you have an affinity for them, but any of the more modern ports are still good. For me, I'll always love the video game that got me into RPGs and making me the gamer that I am today. And I'll always get that same rush of emotion as I did the first time I crossed that bridge. I adore this game. It's because of this that I got such a fondness for RPG games in general, and this one certainly made me fall in love with the franchise. Even though I know it's not the best one, this will always be among my personal top Final Fantasy games because of what it did and what it means to me. I'm sure the other Final Fantasy games are still just as good. Hey, thank you for watching until the end. If you aren't already, please subscribe. If you want something else to watch, you can watch my last video or head over to my gameplay channel where I've got tons more.